nice. Uh, this example three is very similar to that first one that we did where we had the, like, the polar bears on the license plates and you had to figure out what would work for the sequence. Um, here, we don't have a lot of information. We don't know term one, we don't know term two, we don't know term three. Term four right here happens to be minus four. Then we don't know five, don't know six, and then term seven right here we know is 23. And we know that it's an arithmetic sequence. So we know that we're always adding the same thing every single time. So when I'm doing these questions, I like to draw it out like this to give a visual for what's happening. Okay? It also helps you see that if you were going from term 4 to term 5, you would add whatever the common difference is once. When you go from term 5 to term 6, you would add that common difference again. And when you go from term 6 to term 7, you would add that common difference again. Perhaps you can see that you need to add three common differences, because going from 4 to 7, 7 minus 4 is 3. That would be a strategy that you might want to use if it was a similar question, but they told you term 4 and term 700. Because then drawing out the spaces, although it's a nice visual, would take way too long. Okay? So we know that we're going up three times d each time. And there's no formula for this. It's just an idea. I know that if I start at term 4, which is minus 4, and I add d three times, what will I get to? 23. Okay? That, you know, put an asterisk in your notes because there's no formula for that. And this is a unit that has lots of formulas, and one of the things that you're going to get used to is just sort of like, oh, I'm going to use a formula, so I go to my formula sheet and write a formula. This question, you will get stuck if you try to do that. Because the very first step is doing something that makes sense, and you make a relationship, but it isn't on your formula sheet. So yeah, if I start at negative 4 and I add d three times, I'm going to get to 23. We just made an equation where there's only one thing we don't know. We don't know what d is. But you have your algebra skills all the way through. We could add 4 to both sides. And then you get 3d is 27. So divide by 3, and we know that the common difference is 9. We know that we're adding 9 every single time. This question asked us to find term 1. If you know that you're adding 9 every single time, some of you will just say, well, if I'm adding 9 going to the right, if I want to start at negative 4 and go to the left, I'd have to subtract 9. So I would go negative 13, negative 22, negative 31, and find my answer that way. Not a bad strategy, especially this one. It wasn't too much to do, right? Again, we also have to think, what happens if this question started with term 400 to term 700? I don't want to be subtracting 9 399 times to get all the way back to 1. So there, we can also find term 1 by going to our formula. Our formula says that term n is term 1 plus d n minus 1 times. Can I put information in there so that the only thing I don't know, because this is what I want to find, is term 1? Do we know d? Yes. We figured out d was 9. This is what we want to find, so I'll just keep it as term 9. Do we know any other terms? We know term 4, and we know term 7. It won't matter which one you pick. You'll get the same answer either way. Which one would you like to use, the minus 4 or the 23? 23? Good idea. Usually avoiding negative numbers is a 
because if you're going to make some mistakes, usually with a negative number, your chances of making a mistake are greater. So I know term 7 is 23. That would mean my n would be 7 minus 1. If I used the term 4, then my n would have been a 4 minus 1. Now, the only thing we don't know here is the t1. So 23 equals t1. 9 times 6 is 54. I'd subtract 54 on both sides. And I would get negative 31 that way as well. Is there any other questions I asked in this one? Just what is T1? So the questions you can try are 10 and 13.